We saw in the first chapter a way to describe the brake group. We specified some elementary braids, the generators, and then we found the relations, moves that can transform a word without changing the braid it describes. But we still don't know all about this group. For example, the relation don't say how to check if two words are equivalent. Here we have two words and we construct a sequence of relations that connect them. At this stage, we just replace the part of the word inside a yellow box with an equivalent one. We use the two kinds of the relations and the insertion or deletion of a generator and its inverse. In each level, we change the word, but the braid it represents remains the same. It is not so easy to note immediately just looking at the two words that they are equivalent. This becomes evident when we construct the sequence. What about these two words? We try to construct a sequence as before to connect them. It can be a hard job to construct such a sequence of words using the relations. We could spend our whole life looking for one without ever finding it. We will never know whether no sequence exists or we haven't been lucky enough to find it. That's why we need another way to handle the question. More precisely, we wish to construct a machinery that takes two arbitrary words as input, makes some operations and computations, and gives as output the answer yes if the two words are equivalent. Following the same procedure, the answer will be no if the two words represent different braids. Such a procedure is called an algorithm. We are lucky. For braids, we have such an algorithm. Let's look inside it. First of all, we simplify the problem. Two words represent the same braid if and only if one, composed with the inverse of the other, is equivalent to the trivial braid. Therefore, we can reformulate our problem. Given an arbitrary word, decide if it is equivalent to the identity. Or, in other words, is there a way to transform the given word into one? Look at this braid. The color of the bubbles is enough to know where each strand ends. If the bubbles at the same level on the left and on the right have the same colors, then the braid is called pure. Of course, two equivalent braids will have the bubbles with the same color arrangement. So, a braid that is equivalent to the trivial one has to be pure. That's why we consider only pure braids in this chapter. Each pure braid can be decomposed into blocks in this way. In the first block, all the strands but the last are straight. The green strand can link to the others. In the second block, all the strands, but the second to last, are straight. The yellow strand can link only to the strands below. And so on, until the last block, in which the second strand can link to the first one. We know that for each braid there are lots of representatives. We would like 
to choose a specific one of them to describe the braid. It will be called the normal form. Now we need an algorithm that puts any arbitrary word in its normal form. Artin's braid combing is such an algorithm. Here we show it on a non-trivial braid. First, copy the braid and delete the last strand, replacing it with a trivial one. Compose this braid with its inverse, getting the identity braid. So, composing the original braid with it, we don't change the braid. On the left side, we have a braid that can be put into the desired form, with all the strands straight except the top one. This is the first block. We deform the strands so that the green one encircles a strand, passing behind the others, goes back to the initial position, encircles another strand, and so on. This piece is combed. Do the same procedure on the right side. Copy the braid, replace the yellow strand with the trivial one, compose this braid with its inverse, getting a trivial braid, compose this trivial braid with the original one, and tidy up the second block. We put it in a form such that the yellow strand links only with the blue one and the red one. We have combed the second block. Now the last block is easy to rearrange. We have put the braid in its normal form. Artin proved that the braid is trivial if and only if, once it is combed, every block is trivial, meaning that it can be represented with no crossings at all. So, our braid is not trivial. And we have an algorithm to check it. We start with a pure braid. Comb it into blocks. If one of the blocks is not trivial, terminate, answering no. Otherwise, continue with the next block. If all the blocks are trivial, we get the trivial braid and the answer is yes, the input word is equivalent to identity. This algorithm works, but Artem himself was not satisfied with it. In his paper, Theory of Braids, he writes the writer is convinced that any attempt to carry this out on a living person would only lead to violent protests and discrimination against mathematics. Why did he write so? Combing is an extremely slow method. The complexity of the algorithm is very high. If we draw a graph showing the mean time needed to comb a braid, as a function of the number of crossings, the curve is very steep. Increasing the input size by a small amount, the time grows very fast and might be too long even for a computer. This is why mathematicians look for other, quick algorithms. The fastest found so far is probably the one proposed about 15 years ago by De Ornois, a French mathematician. 
it is based on manipulating braids and is called hand reduction. This is a handle. The red strand passes in front of the strand just above and then in front of the strand just below. A handle can also pass twice behind the other strands. This is another handle. This is not a handle because it faces downwards. Neither this is a handle. The blue strand passes once in front of the strand below and once behind. Reducing handles means to move these pieces of string. In this way we change the word, but the braid it represents remains the same. A theorem of De Ornois ensures that a word with no handles is either empty or it represents a non-trivial braid. Let's sketch the handle reduction algorithm. Take a pure braid. If there are no handles and the braid has at least one crossing, terminate, answering no. Otherwise, if there are handles, find the one that ends first and reduce it. Continue like this until there are no more handles. If the braid is not trivial, the answer is no. If after reducing all the handles, the braid is trivial, then the answer will be yes. But there is a problem. What if the algorithm does not end? It could maybe go into a loop. If it comes back to a word that it has already met, the steps after that one will always be the same and the algorithm will never stop. In fact, this is never the case. It has been shown that the algorithm always terminates. We don't yet know the complexity of this algorithm, but we have some experimental estimates, and it seems much faster than the other known algorithms. Combing, handles, the formalization of braids in terms of words is really powerful. Thank you.